In this video, we're gonna show you how to remove Grub from your Windows PC. So this is for people who have installed Linux. Uh, the version of Linux doesn't matter and you want to remove it and just revert to only using Windows. Warning. Warning. The first thing we need to do is determine whether or not your computer has a recovery partition. And to do that, we need to right click on the Windows icon on the start bar and select disk management. And from there, it's gonna pop up a window that's gonna list all the hard drives in your PC. Now, if you only have one, this will be easy, but if you have more than one, then you wanna try and select the C drive like I've done here, and then you will see whether or not you have a recovery partition right here. Now, if you do, you can go ahead and shut the computer down, and then we're going to proceed with turning the computer on and off three times, making sure that we power off when we see our computer's splash screen. I have an Alienware, so mine looks like this, but yours may be different depending on the brand of PC you have. On the fourth time that we reboot the computer, it should reboot into the recovery partition, so you do not want to shut it down on the fourth attempt. And if it was successful, you'll be greeted with a screen that looks like this. So once you are rebooted into your recovery partition, you want to click on see advanced repair options. And then from here, you're going to click on troubleshoot, which is right here. From here, you're going to click on advanced options again. And then the thing that we're looking for is command prompt right here. So we want to select this one and it's going to bring you this um, DOS looking box for those of you that are old like me and know what MS DOS is. And from here, we're just going to type in boot rec space forward slash fix MBR. And it should look just like this. Once you have that all typed out, then you can go ahead and press enter or return. And it should say the operation completed successfully. Now, if, if this all worked, we can go ahead and close this out and we can click on turn off your PC and shut down. Now, if your computer doesn't have a recovery partition or recovery mode that allows you to do what we just showed you in the video, where you turn your computer off and back on three times, and then on that fourth attempt, it allows you to reboot into the recovery partition to do the actions that we did, you can actually create a recovery USB for Windows, and they will require a thumb drive similar to this one that is approximately one gigabyte in size. And I will show you how to go ahead and make that right now. So to create your recovery drive on Windows 11, um, you are simply going to type in search box here, recovery drive, and you're gonna select this application. We'll select yes on the pop-up. Now, if you don't have this, just real quick, you're gonna to wanna to go to this website and I'll throw the link down in the description below. This is gonna give you directions on how to create a recovery drive for Windows 11 and Windows 10 specifically. And then it was called by different names if you have an uh, earlier version of Windows. So if you have Windows 7 or Windows 8.1, you can use these links here in order to create the recovery drive. I'm on Windows 11, so I'm gonna use the application that's already on my computer. But for this, we do not need to back up any system files, but if this is something that you like to keep, then by all means, um, you can select this. Just know that you're gonna need bigger than a one gigabyte thumb drive then at that point. So I'm gonna uncheck this and then uh, we're gonna click next. At that point, we can plug the drive into our computer. And it will show the available drive. We select next. It's giving us a warning that everything will be deleted and we click create. Yeah. 
If you get any of those pop-ups, you can go ahead and just close them. It's just the formatting of the drive and the copy of the files. Um, you don't need to do anything with them. The important piece is this window right here where it shows you that it's copying all the stuff over to the drive. And so from here, we just wait for this to finish up. And once it's complete, it will say the recovery drive is ready. So we can click finish. And then from here, um, we can go ahead and restart our PC. Once your recovery drive USB is finished, you can go ahead and restart your PC and you're gonna want to press the, uh, whatever key you need to get into your boot menu. So I have an Alienware computer, so for me it's F12, but it could be F12, the delete key, F10, sometimes it's F8. It really just depends on your PC manufacturer um, or if you have a custom PC, your motherboard manufacturer. So that's something that you're gonna have to either look up in your computer's literature or Google, um, but you, you need to be able to boot from the USB drive if your computer is not already set to do that automatically. On some computers, if they're older, you will need to go in and actually change the boot order in the BIOS to be able to read from the USB before reading from the hard drive and again, that's gonna be different on every single computer. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and boot into the USB and then I'll show you what you need to do on the computer. So this is what my boot order looks like when I press F12 when my computer is rebooting. And so you wanna press whatever key it is for your manufacturer um, right around when you see the, the splash screen. So for me, it's when I see the Alienware pop up on my computer monitor. For you, it might be HP or uh, Dell. Uh, what have you. And so we want to make sure that we're going to be selecting the USB that we just made. So in my case, you can see here that I have USB one windows boot manager. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that that is highlighted, which it already is. But if it weren't, I could just use the arrow keys on the keyboard and then I'm going to press enter. And this is going to boot us into the recovery drive that we just made from here. You will select your keyboard layout. So for me, it's us. And then this is very similar to what I showed at the beginning of the video. So we're going to just do troubleshoot, advanced options, and then we're looking for command prompt. And then again, it's the exact same code that we already typed previously. So it's going to be bootrec space forward slash fix MBR. And then once that's done, you just press return. And if you get the operation completed successfully, then you know that it worked. So from here, we can go ahead and X out and turn off your PC. Once you've completed doing the command prompt uh, command, then you are clear to restart your computer after we've turned it off. And you should see that the, the grub screen is actually gone but your Linux partitions are still on your hard drive. So I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and clean that up next. The easiest way to remove the partitions from Linux is to, at least on Windows 11, and I believe this also works for Windows 10, is to right click on the start button and you will see a pop-up that looks like this. And we're gonna click on disk management. And this is gonna show us all the drives that are in our computer as well as their partitions. So <clears throat> the easiest way to do it is if you have an additional drive, which is how I had Linux installed on my computer, um, you can go to your folder right here and then go to my, or this PC on previous versions of Windows, it was called my computer. And so this is gonna show you your C drive and I have a D drive. And so these are both used by Windows and you can see that these correlate to this here as well as this one here. So these two, I do not want to touch. And if you notice when I select them, it actually highlights them down here with these lines. So I'll show you here. So you can see this shows you the C drive. This is the entire drive though. So we don't want to touch disc one or disc two in my case. Now, if you have just one single drive and you've made a partition, then when you select this, it's going to show you the healthy partition and then it's going to show you the part or the windows rather I said healthy it's going to show you the windows piece and then it should show you the Linux piece after it and so you're going to select the partition that we need to get rid of and you buy and you would like basically delete it 
and I'll show you how to do that because I'm going to get rid of my entire drive. So for me, I want to get rid of disk one. So my disk two is my C drive. Disk one is where I have Linux installed. Disk zero is my D drive. So disk one. You Another way actually is, so Windows uses NTFS as the file format. And so you can see NTFS here for disk zero and then also for disk two. So that's how we know we don't want to touch anything that says NTFS because that has to do with Windows. So if we right click on it, it looks like we have to do partition two first, click delete volume. We're going to get that um, pop up. We're sure we want to delete it. And then we'll do the same thing for partition three. So we're unable to delete the EFI partition from uh, disk management within Windows here. It won't, it won't let you do it. So you need to go to your search bar and we're going to type in disk part and press enter. This is going to open up command prompt. We're going to go ahead and type in list disk. This is going to show us all the different hard drives that are on our computer. And if you look here, we were looking at disk one, it's 953 gig. In my case, so yours is going to be completely different depending on how many hard drives you have. Um, so for me, disk one is 953 gigs. So we're going to select disk one. And then from there, we're going to list the partitions. And there's only one partition left. It is a system partition. It is 300 megabytes. And that is because we deleted the other two partitions through the disk management software in Windows. So in your case, if you're doing this on one drive, you're going to have more than one uh, partition listed here. And you want to be very careful that you don't inadvertently delete the wrong one because then your computer will not boot. <clears throat> so we're going to do delete. Actually, I want to do select partition one and then delete partition. And if we go back here, you'll see it is now all on allocated space. I really hope this worked out for everybody. If you have any issues, don't forget to hit me up down in the comments. Um, and like always, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. That helps me out a lot, helps the channel grow. And that's it for this one, so peace.